Okay, so what we're going to do is remove this white background and replace it with this cool grungy background that I've got set up here. So in advance of this tutorial, I've got my two files that are set up same size and resolution for the ease of um, showing you what to do, but it is a good idea to do that. Um, so make sure that you are set up. You don't have two different images, two very different resolutions, otherwise you'll have a bit of problem with your printing um, process. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is actually look at our channels, which is bottom right next to your layers panel. If you can't see that, just reset your essentials, top right here, click reset. Okay, so click on your channels, and you'll see now this is where our colors have been created. If I click on red, you'll see everywhere in that image where the red is applied, green, and blue. So what you'll see is that we've got quite good contrast between the foreground and the background here, depending on which one we click on. We actually want one that's got the best contrast, and you may have noticed that blue is our winner here. Don't worry about clicking on the eyes. You'll see things might get a bit confusing with different colors popping up. So we actually just click on the words themselves. So click on the blue option here, which gave us that best contrast between the uh, foreground and background. So I don't want to work on this actual channel. If I do, I'll start to change the, the dark tones in my image and mess with the colors a bit. So we don't want to do that, but we do want to work with this, um, a duplicate of this. So all I've done is click with my black arrow, click on my blue channel, and I'm just dragging this down to that icon down beside my trash can. That's one way you can duplicate. You can obviously right click, click on your um, duplicate, or you can click on that option here as well, the little drop down menu. So it's just my preference dragging. So I'm going to call this my temporary mask. I've just double clicked on the word, which has allowed me to change that mask. And click OK. Okay, so now we can adjust this a bit more. We want, as like I said, as good contrast of black and white as possible, and we're still a little bit uh, tonal, a bit too much grey here. So I want us to head up to image, top of our screen, head to adjustments and levels. So what we're going to do here is basically work with our um, darks, midtones, and lights of the image. We won't worry about this um, at this stage. So if I take this to the extreme, just so you can see what's going to happen, changing my mid-tones, you'll see that I'm obviously putting, adding too much uh, dark to that image. Same here. Or adding too much light with my lights. A little arrow. So I already have my settings for this one set up, ready to go. This one's 0.45. And this one is, remembering, it is 2.14, I think. Yeah. So if I turn my preview on and off here, You'll see now that it is much better in that contrast between black and white as opposed to uh, greys and white. So click OK. OK, so we do need to add uh, a bit more to this. We need to make sure that this is all fully coloured in black. If we don't, it just means that part of this image will show through in this area here. We need to basically, like it says, and mask it out. So anywhere that is solid black will be masked out um, so you can't actually see through it. So we need to cover this up as well. So grab our paintbrush on the left, making sure that it's uh, hard, normal and 100% opacity so it's solid black. And I'm just going to colour this in. Make my brush a bit larger. My brackets beside my P on the keyboard. There we go. Okay, so if you were nice and, uh, what am I trying to say? If you were uh, steady with your hand, then you can obviously go through and do that outline as well. I'm not going to, you can see it's not a very good um, edge. So what I'll do is combine some tools together. I'm just going to grab my quick selection tool, fourth down, quick selection tool. And this is a really great tool to use um, that it picks up. Whatever you click on, it picks up anything else that's of similar um, tones nearby. So if I click and drag a little bit, you'll see that it's automatically picked up that nice edge for me. So when I go back to my paintbrush and I colour in, you'll see it's only painting inside that marching and area. If I do a D select now, Control or Command D, you will see that I do have a bit of an area that I need to fill in, and that was where our marching ants were sitting. So if I just go through in my black arrow. 
So we've got this whole area masked out as we need. We've got the nice contrast, white and black, and we've also got this nice wispy bit of her hair still uh, with those little fine hair bits. So next part is to turn this into our final mask. So down the bottom, you'll see down here, uh, far, far bottom right, is we've got our little um, add to selection icon. It's the little marching ant. It's now picked up everything that's white. We want it to pick up the actual area that will be masked. So if I do an inverse here, just use my shortcut, but the long way inverse. And now what we do is just bring our image back to life. So click on the RGB in your channel mask. And you'll see here we've got our woman back, uh, but we've also got this all this nice detail here selected that we wouldn't have been able to do uh, any other way. We don't actually need this anymore. You could delete it or leave it there. doesn't really matter. Head over to your layers panel. If you're on an earlier version, you will need to double click your background word, uh, rename it, and then do the stage that we're about to do now. If you're on a more recent version, you don't need to do that. You just need to head straight to the bottom where your um, mask icon is. Click on that and you'll see we've now created our mask. We've got rid of our white background. So looking at our layers panel, we've got a box here now. We could obviously right click on this little chain, disable if you want to bring that white back, delete or enable. So there's a few options that you can do there as well. So let's bring our background over. So here's my background that I've got set up. I'm just going to select that, Control or Command A, and my black arrow. I'm just going to drag this, drag it with my mouse. I'm still holding my mouse down and I'm just going to release it when I get onto my image and you'll see I've got my background here now. I'm just going to put it in place, snaps to, and all I need to do is change the order of my layers. Drag down. Great, job done, almost finished. Uh, you'll see that we've got a few things to do. I've got a bit of a white edge here, a bit of a white glow around the outside that's still white is hanging around. Um, and you'll see here as well. So if I click on my click once on my mask, you'll see I get this little tiny border around the outside. If I do that to my actual image, you'll see that border swaps. That border is basically indicating what I will work on. So if I'm I've got it on the actual person, I'll be able to change anything about her, darks, lights, colours, etc. If I've got it actually on the mask, that means that I can refine um, the mask edge or make any adjustments to that. So I'm going to double click on that mask in the layers panel and I'll get up this box here and all I'm going to do now is refine that mask edge. So what you'll see, and I'll just change my settings back to what it was. So if I change this edge, I'll take it to the extreme. You see if I um, add pixels to that edge, you'll start to get back some of that white. If I take this the opposite way, get rid of some of those edge pixels, it's going to obviously get take in and go internal and start to get rid of some of those edges. So I just want to get a, a bit of a balance between getting rid of that white but also not getting rid of too much of the image. So maybe about it's looking a bit better. Maybe a little bit. There we go. Um, smooth. We see smooth that edge. If you don't want it to get too smooth around the edge here, you just want it to be a little bit uh, a little bit more subtle. So I'll just take it back. It's a bit smoother, it's looking better. Uh, feather, I can obviously feather that edge. I don't need to do that though, but I could add maybe, you know, one pixel or 0.5 or something just to give it a little bit of a, um, a blur on that edge. And contrast, I won't worry about. Um, if your view is different to mine when you were clicking on it, you can change your view mode. I like to work on, on layers, that's how it will show you how it is on the screen. You can obviously have other options as well. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. And if I wasn't quite happy with how that was shaping up, I could obviously work on the actual image. I could go in and grab my um, burn tool and maybe darken some of those edges if I wanted to as well. Um, I probably wouldn't in this instance. Um, it's just, as you can see, a little bit harsh. But that's another option that you can do as well. I do prefer this um, mask properties box. So there you go. Um, job done. It's not quite complete, but you get the idea for um, this process, and that's pretty much all there is to it.